Polyrhythms are a very natural combination of math and music. And today I'd like to share with you a method I recently found to make interesting polyrhythms using a topic from advanced math. But first, what is a polyrhythm? In some sense, the structure of a song is defined by the number of beats per measure. Most songs have four beats per measure. But some have another number, like three, or five. And a polyrhythm is a combination of different values. So you might have three against four, or four against five. And you can make more complex polyrhythms by making these numbers larger, but you can also do that using cyclotomic polynomials to make what I call cyclotomic polyrhythms. To understand what cyclotomic polynomials are, first let's consider the equation x minus 1 equals 0. And the solution to this is fairly simple, x equals 1. And if we plug in x, we see that yes, 1 minus 1 is 0. What if we add a square in there? What's the solution to x squared minus 1 equals 0? Well again, x equals 1, because 1 squared minus 1 is the same as 1 minus 1 is 0. But we get a second solution. x could also be negative 1, because that squares to 1. So here we have two solutions to this equation. Now let's think about x cubed minus 1. How many solutions would you guess that this has? Well again, x equals 1 is a solution. But this time, x does not equal negative 1, because that would give us a result of negative 2. So, is 1 the only solution, or is there something else? Well, it turns out that if we look across the entire number line, yes, 1 is the only solution. But if we expand our search into a two-dimensional number grid, then we get two other points which are also solutions. And interestingly, these three solutions form an equilateral triangle. Now if we go to x to the fourth minus 1, we get four solutions and they form a square. And x to the fifth minus 1 gives us a regular pentagon, and x to the sixth minus 1 gives us a regular hexagon. And this pattern continues, but for now let's stick with this hexagon. So we have this hexagon of solutions to the equation on the right, but what should we call these points? Well, perhaps a good name for this is 1 to the 1 6th power. Because if we plug that in for x, then the 6 will cancel with the 1 6th, and we'll be left with 1 minus 1 equals 0. Then this would be 1 of the 2 6th, 1 of the 3 6th, and so forth. So now that these numbers have names, we can look at their properties. And we're going to focus on the left side of that equation x to the sixth minus 1. Now we won't go through all of the math, but you can show that this equals x minus 1 to the 1 sixth times x minus 1 to the 2 sixths times x minus the rest of them. But you may have noticed some of these exponents are a little unsatisfying. Like, maybe we should write 1 to the 1 third instead of 1 to the 2 sixths as it is above. And maybe 1 to the half instead of 1 to the 3 sixths. So we'll reduce all of the fractions in the exponents. And now let's combine the ones with the same denominator. So we'll put the ones with a sixth together. And then if we multiply them, this is what we would get. And then we'll combine the ones with a third. And then we'll bring over the half and the one. And so now we have these four polynomials that multiply to equal x to the sixth minus one. But these are much nicer. They don't use any fractional exponents. They're all just whole numbers. And it turns out this is the smallest we can break down x to the 6 minus 1 while still using whole numbers. And so we can say that these are kind of like prime polynomials. Kind of like how each number has a prime factorization into other numbers. But we wouldn't usually say prime polynomials. These are actually called the cyclotomic polynomials. And we write them like this, with the Greek letter phi, and then the little number on the right tells us what denominator that came from. 
And it turns out we can visualize each of these polynomials with a shape. So let's take a look at phi sub 6. So here we have our hexagon of numbers on the right, and we have phi sub 6, which is x squared minus x plus 1. Now if we plug in 1 to the 6th power, we'll get 1 to the 2 sixths, so we'll put a point there. We get negative 1 to the 6th, so we'll put a red point there because it's negative, and then we get plus 1. And that's the same as 1 to the 6 sixths, so we'll put a point there. Now we have a negative point, but we can make it positive by sending it to the opposite side of the hexagon. And now if we connect these points, we have an equilateral triangle. So we can say the shape of phi sub 6 is a triangle. Now let's take a look at some of the shapes of the other cyclotomic polynomials. 1 and 2 are very boring, they're just a straight line. And the same is true with the other powers of 2. 3 gives us a triangle, and so do 6 and 9. 5 and 10 give us pentagons, and then 7 gives us a heptagon. The multiples of 3 are triangles, and the multiples of 5 are pentagons. But what shape is 15? That's a multiple of 3 and 5. 15 gives us this shape, which is no longer regular. The sides have different length. What is this? It turns out we can break this up into other shapes. So if we just take these points, we can connect three of them with a pentagon. Although that does give us two points that we didn't want. But that's okay, because we can connect two of the other points using a triangle. Again, we get an extra point we don't want. But now we have two points that are opposite from each other. So they cancel each other out, and we can remove them. And then once again, we can add a triangle, and then we get two points that are opposites, and we can remove them. And so now we have a much more natural way to think about that shape. And we can say that that shape of 15 is equal to a pentagon plus two triangles minus two lines. And so we could use that to create a polyrhythm that's 5 against 3 against 3 with some beats missing. And that sounds like this. But why is 15 special? Why did we get a weird shape for that? Well, it turns out that's because 15 is 3 times 5, which are two different odd prime numbers. OK, so let's look at something else with that property. The next one is 21, which is 3 times 7. With 21, we get this shape, but we can break that down very similarly. So we see this equals a heptagon plus a triangle, and then we cancel some points, plus another triangle, cancel some more points. And again, we can use this to produce a polyrhythm, which sounds like this. As we just saw, large numbers are more complicated. Phi sub 33 and 39 each have four triangles instead of just two. And larger numbers have even more triangles, so it quickly becomes too messy to really use for music. But the math becomes very interesting. There's a link in the description to a follow-up video that I've made that takes a deeper dive into the mathematics, so check that out if you're interested. If you'd like to make your own music, here's the structure of the polyrhythm. Um, so this is for 15. It's a 5 against 3 against 3 with a cycle of 30 beats. The 5 falls on 1, 7, and 25 with the missing beats grayed out. We have a 3 on 8 and 18, and then another 3 on 14 and 24. Here's the structure for phi sub 21. And for phi sub 55, which I didn't cover, but it has a pretty nice structure. Let me know in the comments if you end up using any of these, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy learning about cyclotomic polyrhythms.